Hey everybody, it's Bunny, and today's video is gonna be completely random. I have seen videos like this swirling around on YouTube where people will buy like used sketchbooks, sometimes used diaries. I haven't really seen anything else like used scrapbooks or anything like that. That would be really, really awesome. People will buy like a filled book of some sort and then they will do flip throughs and I can't get enough of those videos. I love to watch them. Today we're gonna to be flipping through an item that I actually forgot that I owned. I know that that sounds insane, but I bought this a couple of years ago at a really awesome antique show that I think it goes by a couple of different names, but now I don't even know what I call it. If it's Round Top or Round Rock, I swear we have like a burger chain called Round Top. So maybe that's not, or maybe it's like Round Rock, but it's in a city called Round Top. This is gonna drive me crazy. If I remember what it is, by the time I'm editing this video, I'll type it in here. And if not, this space is blank. It is a huge antique show that goes on twice a year, usually in Texas. And it's in this really tiny Texas town that probably year round, like 200 people live in. It's so amazing. And it's literally like miles of antiques that you can go and just sift through. They have everything. They have like some super high end, like really expensive, like Napoleonic furniture all the way down to what a lot of people would consider junk and people like me would consider treasure. A lot of these buildings where the antiques are kept, where the stores come to life, let's say two times a year are actually like old abandoned houses. Like they'll be built, I don't know, like late 1800s, early 1900s. And people, sometimes they live in these homes year round and then they'll like set up an antique shop like during this, I think the show usually goes on for like two weeks. And sometimes they just like come and rent these spaces and set up shop and then like leave and go somewhere else. So I guess it's almost like a Renaissance festival of antique dealers. I bought this very item we're gonna be looking at today, probably two or three years ago, it was in a store that mostly sold like beads and jewelry. I'm trying to get you guys like really good. Oh, there we go. Okay, so everything is in a little plastic bag right now. And I was actually like digging through my nightstand and that's how I ran across this item. And I was like, oh my God, this maybe would make a fun video. So what we have in here is a ton of teeny tiny tin type wow say that five times fast teeny tiny tin type portraits that have quite a collection of tin type photographs and i wish i had some that was not currently stapled to the wall and this is a good size reference this isn't a tin type photograph i feel dumb actually this is just a freaking mirror but this is a good size reference most of the 10 type photographs in my collection are this size. And a lot of them are usually on a thicker cardstock material uh, that's usually referred to as like cabinet cards. Like you'll have like a thick postcard. I've never seen 10 type photographs this tiny. I'm not sure what their original purpose would be for making them this tiny. So uh, let me know if you know in the comments down below. First, I feel like I should show you guys the actual album. It's really small. We have this really cool like gold embossed lettering on this side that says album. And you know, the back looks the same, very worn. And we do have this latch on the side. This is really awesome that this is intact, honestly, because I have a bunch of albums like this more often than not. Like you'll have the top here and the bottom, but very rarely do you actually have this little like latch. Some wear and tear, like a little bit of binding separation, but overall pretty good condi condi condition. <laughs> so we flip it open and we have this first page here that says album. Now, unfortunately it doesn't have any kind of like family name in it or anything, because that would probably be very fascinating to know whose family album this is. These are all the blank pages. I'm just doing a quick flip through so you guys can see, you know, all of the staining and paper peeling and all of that. I'm pretty sure these little types of things is because bugs have been at it. I love stuff that looks like this. They were selling the album and the miniatures 
separately. So I'm gonna go ahead and show you guys this one first. I am so torn. Way the weather, I just want to keep the portraits separate in these little baggies or put them in the album. So here we have two ladies and they're wearing these very pretty dresses. Looks like they're wearing um, gingham. And these things are very, very sharp because they are 10. So they, they will cut you <laughs> if you're not careful. I am so glad that I decided to just take an iPhone clip of this one just to test it and see how the footage looked. I'm definitely gonna be doing iPhone footage for each one because I feel like there's so many details that the iPhone camera picks up that I didn't even notice at first with the naked eye. Oh my gosh, I just feel like this is one of my favorites. This is a good example of, you're gonna be able to see a lot of the image scraped away on this one, a raw tin exposed. This one definitely looks very, very loved. And it seems to be an image of a younger boy. I feel like every single time I'm pausing to record an iPhone clip and then I'm like, oh, I just have a totally different opinion about the portraits. Each time I look at them clearer and more up close, it's almost like looking at them with a magnifying glass or looking at them with the naked eye because I always thought that that last portrait was of a really young boy but now looking at his face more up close he looks older like maybe 16 would we say he is 16 17 he still looks young but when I bought that portrait I thought he was definitely like a child and I don't I don't quite think he is next portraits. It's hard for me to say because, you know, I mean, people unfortunately like just didn't live as long back in the day. So I would think that just looking at this with the naked eye, this is about somebody who's, you know, in their young to mid thirties. Oh my gosh. Once again, just like his facial expression. He really looks like he has somewhat of a smile, which I know is like so common. Like, why would I even say that? Like based uh, on modern day photography, where we're always like, say cheese. Uh, but back in the day, people very, very rarely smiled at all in portraits. I feel like I once knew the reasoning behind that, but I definitely don't anymore. But yeah, it's like, don't you guys think he's smiling? Doesn't it almost look like his mouth is slightly open? Now this one also looks like it has a little bit of color added to the cheeks. Normally it's on like much larger portraits. Like for example, and I will, I'll film a closer, a closer up shot. This is literally one of my favorite antiques of all time back here. I refer to her lovingly as Ghost Baby, but I've always thought that that portrait is a combination of photograph with painting over it. That's one of the details that makes her look so ghostly to me is the fact that she has this white dress painted on over the picture. And in contrast to the rest of the portrait, like the white just really stands out on her dress. And yeah, I, I don't know, you guys, you guys will be able to see, I'm sure if you've been on my channel for a while, you're probably very familiar with this portrait. I feel like it's been in the background of all my videos for probably like the past six, seven years or so. I have never seen colorization done or paint added to such small portraits. Who do we have here? Now, I thought that this would definitely be an older man, maybe grandpa age. I mean, once again, people got married and had kids a lot earlier than usually we do these days. But um, yeah, I would think, what, what do you guys think? Oh, rosy cheeks too, very kind eyes. And I, 10 out of 10, would wear that striped vest. So this portrait seems like in very good condition. We don't have that much scraping, damaging. It's not very bent. I'm impressed. This guy, oh, he like speaks to me in some kind of way. Like he just looks like he would be some kind of artistic kind of personality to me. Now, here I am. I almost said judging a book by its cover, but I'm judging a portrait by its look. I love to just like make up stories about these people in my head. Oh my God, like Spoon River Anthology. Have you guys ever read that? It's been so long since I have, but it was a it was an author who used to go sit at a, a in a graveyard all the time and he didn't know the people on the tombstones, but he would make up little poems for everyone in this one graveyard. And that, oh, that's just like something that's like stuck with me my whole life. I mean, doesn't he just look like he has a big personality? Also, I love all of the now 
When you see a doll and it's crackled, it's uh, called crazing. And I'm not sure if we can use the same terminology with uh, photographs or not, but I love all of these. It almost looks like, you know, creases or cuts into the photo. Guys, I wish pictures could talk. Up next, it's this dude. And he looks like he's got some amazing hair. And once again, I think when we really zero in on this with the iPhone, we're gonna be able to see so much more clothing detail. I don't know why I'm just, I'm having a moment now thinking about this. Like, of course they didn't know technology like this was coming, but like, can you imagine that this guy sitting down for this portrait all these years ago is now being seen by all of you guys all over the world on YouTube? Like, that's just, I don't know. I just, I don't feel like people, Obviously people didn't have those kind of thoughts, but it's just, I don't know, it's so fascinating that we can do that kind of thing. Oh my gosh, the beard. And I could definitely see he was in a leaning position, but you can really see, I think that this is like tassels on this stool here. Now I'm not exactly sure um, what photographic process this was taken in. I know that there were several photographic processes in the Victorian era where it would take several hours for, maybe not several hours, but like a really long time for your portrait to get done being made. So they would have all kinds of stools for you to sit on, lean on, um, to keep your posture correct, to help keep you in the same pose during the entire time that the photograph was basically being taken and possibly developed. So we have that, which is pretty interesting. And you guys, in the background, this kind of stuff really fascinates me. It looks like he's actually sat in like the corner of a room, like right here. This looks like, you know, the edge of a wall. And what is that hanging on the wall? I think I got this next guy because he sort of had like an Edgar Allan Poe look to him. I think it's just the hair. I think this guy would maybe be in his late 20s, early 30s. And now that I look at him more like this, he kind of has less of an Edgar Allan Poe feel and more of like kind of a Wild West cowboy kind of feel. All he's missing is the hat. I wonder what these people did. I wonder what their lives were like. Wouldn't it be so weird if you guys uh, thought that one of these people was your relative or something? Ooh, we've got a guy here. And I can see he has some other kind of piece of furniture. <gasps> Wait, is this the same guy? Oh my gosh, is this? No, I was telling you guys how he had something shoved in his pocket and it looked like particularly kind of bulky, but look, this guy also has something shoved in his pocket. I don't know what's going on there. I mean, I'm assuming it's a handkerchief, but it just it looks like a very thick handkerchief. Doesn't it almost look like he has books or something he's holding underneath his arm there? I don't know. Once again, light blushing on the cheeks. I, I don't know if they're smiling or not. See, this might be a good point of reference for they're not smiling in this photo. They look angry to me. I really like the pose of like this guy. I don't know his face. I don't know who I'm looking at here. Up next, we are back to a single portrait of a man. And it looks like he has quite a beard. And I'm, I'm really interested to see what this is. I don't even know if you guys can see it on this camera, but it looks like he's wearing a bit of jewelry or something there. Ooh, maybe it's a, uh, like a watch fob, you know, uh, for like pocket watches or something. He has a very interesting expression too. Something, Something about the eyes, huh? Once again, this guy just looks so familiar. I guess it's just because they have similar hairstyles and similar beard or a goatee. If you recognize this guy, no. See, I feel like now that I'm looking at him up close, the face is definitely different. But like I said, the hair, facial hair, very similar. This one is really, really interesting. And I think that this was like the original portrait that I saw. I think that they were originally turning these portraits into charms for earrings or necklaces or bracelets or whatever you want to do with them. And so I think I did buy this one to do some kind of jewelry stuff with. Uh, but I think then I just asked them like, oh, do you guys have any more of these? And I think that's when they then like brought all of these out. And then I just bought them as is before, you know, they punched holes in them or anything. So let's take a even closer look at this guy. He 
almost has like a very menacing expression. Up next, this dude. I'm really liking the hair. I think he's gonna have a more moody expression. Ooh, <gasps> this like must have been stuck in an album. I feel like the cheek tenting is a little different on this one, right? Up next, we have two people. And uh, at first, for whatever reason, I thought that this was a father and a son. Now maybe upon closer examination, they actually appear to be round about the same age. Just one is standing and one is sitting. I guess you were lucky back in the day if you got the sitting spot. Oh, look at that guy's face. Wow, that's, okay, I'm gonna say something maybe dumb, but oh my God, do you guys know what is this guy? Um, Aston, the original actor that played Gomez Adams on the Adams Family TV show. I swear this guy looks just like him. It, it feels like one of those portraits where it's like Keanu Reeves is a vampire or Tom Cruise is a vampire. You guys know where you just like see people in old photographs that look suspiciously like modern day celebrities. They must have some sort of close relationship. I would imagine the standing guy has his arm around the shoulder of the other guy. This one might be my favorite one so far today, but maybe it's just because I have a super soft spot in my heart for that actor. So he was also in freaking Eerie, Indiana. I loved that show when I was a kid. Oh, thumbs up if you guys remember Eerie, Indiana. All right, up next, we have another guy with a very thick and heavy beard. And I would imagine that this guy is maybe one of the older portraits that we have seen today. Older, like his age wise. This one looks like almost brand new on the back. And this one is actually quite smooth. I'm sure you guys will be able to see. I feel like this is maybe the best preserved portrait we've seen so far today. I mean, the edge almost looks glossy. It's, it's uncanny. So yeah, I don't know. I mean, I don't know now if he's old or if he's just like very, very thin but I'm sure y'all can see like very little, hardly any cracking or anything on the surface of this portrait. It almost looks like it was just done yesterday. I mean, to think that something is so old, but still looks so new, very interesting. All right, up next, this one, I remember at the time when I bought this was one of my favorites. Some of them just have more character. I guess than others. Like some of them just seem a little bit more unique. Like they just have something different about the way they chose to sit or how they look styled that day. Let's take a closer look. Oh my gosh, you guys, he doesn't look as happy as I thought he did. He, he almost looks a little bit melancholy, huh? Wow. Not much wear and tear on this one either. Up next, oh, we got another poser, you guys. This guy, once again, to me, looks like he's some sort of an artist. Is he a scholar? Oh, doesn't he? Is that a mustache? I really can't tell if he has like a faint mustache or if it's just like scratching. I mean, I know these are scratches, but it almost looks like he has either a mustache or a very pouty lip. Once again, we see like a very bulbous pocket scarf there. Oh, I thought he was wearing a ring, but I think it's just wear and tear on the photograph. He also looks a lot younger than I originally thought. Looks quite young. I definitely thought that that was like a portrait of somebody older. All right, you guys, it looks like we only have four left. Let's take a look here at this dude. Very, very interesting. He looks like, you know, very neat, like his hair, some of the neatest hair we've seen today, I think. And also this one looks like it's in really good condition as well. Look at that subtle expression. Dare we say he's smirking? Sir, are you smirking? Um, I love this striped bow tie. Now, this is definitely one of the more interesting ones today. Oh, I love stuff like this. I really do. These are definitely more portraits that I refer to as like ghost-like portraits because a good portion of the face is missing. I feel like this one is very ambiguous. I think it's a portrait of a man. I feel like it's the same reason why I buy a lot of the dolls that I do that are broken or their faces are just like cracked and crumbling. I 
love stuff like that. I feel like it really tells a story. It has so much character. Where the portrait is missing, you fill in the blank. <laughs> so let's take a more up close look at this. Oh my gosh, you guys, what kind of portrait is this? This is so, I literally cannot tell if uh, he's wearing a hat or doesn't it almost look like a hat? And then it looks like he has a very specific type of shirt on, a very specific kind of collar. Up next, we've got this guy. <laughs> I don't know why I said guy so, so strangely. I'm excited to see what his expression is going to look like up close. You know, right now it looks pretty serious, but hey, this wouldn't be the first time I'm like surprised by a secret smirk. And what is this thing? It's like some sort of like necktie. It's got a pattern to it. Look at his eyes. He must have had like blue eyes or very light eyes, I guess, because they almost appear white in this photograph. And yeah, he looks, he looks just straight up serious, you guys. Like this is definitely an interesting look here. Last portrait of the day. And once again, this one looks like it's gonna be nice and worn. Lots of crazing, lots of pitting, and lots of kinds of stuff that normally, you know, draws me to select one portrait over another portrait. Ooh, look at that. You guys, this almost looks like it was exposed to heat or something where the image is bubbling up on the tin. Doesn't it just like strike you when they have these like far off looks or something? I'm like, oh, are you a poet? Did you know it? That's definitely the worst joke I've made all day. Just something about that expression. You know, I mean, once again, like it looks like his mouth is open, like he's about to talk or something. Almost like he was caught off guard, which obviously like, you know, I don't feel like there was very many pictures like that taken back in the day where you're like, oh, surprise, I'm taking your picture. It's like, you you knew when your picture was being taken. But look at that rippling up close. That's so fascinating. You guys are gonna have to let me know your thoughts and opinions on this video. I almost want to leave these separate. I know maybe how annoying that is to some of you guys that I'm not gonna like shove them in the album. I would rather find little nooks and crannies here in my filming room to stick all these little portraits versus like shoving them in an album because let's be honest, it's not like I'm gonna pick up this album and like flip through it every day or something. Would you like for me to do more of these in-depth kind of like flip through videos? I do have a diary that I bought and I'm honestly working on transcribing it right now, but I might do an unboxing for it soon because it is a famous person's diary. It's like a diary and all of their artifacts. If you stayed this long in the video, it's kind of like a surprise of a video that is upcoming, but I don't know if I want to like save that for Vlogoween for October when it's kind of like, oh, like creepier season. I don't know. I do have a couple antique scrapbooks and also I'm not sure if it's an antique sketchbook, but I have a very old artist's sketchbook. I have one book that, oh my God, it would be a very, very long video. It's like a book about this thick, but it's all newspaper clippings of cowboy related stuff. It's all like cowboy films, actors, pictures of cowboys from movies. So crazy. Definitely one of the coolest antique pieces that I own. Leave me a comment down below. Let me know which portrait was your favorite. If you had a favorite, let me know if you made it till the end of the video. I'm just kind of curious how interested you guys are in stuff like this. And I probably talked way too long about certain portraits, but I don't know. I really just like looking at them, analyzing them. I love it. Okay, thank you guys so, so much for hanging out with me today and for watching. If you're not already and you'd like to be, hit the button down below, subscribe. I'm a member of the Swamp Family and give an alligator its wings. I love you guys so, so much and I will see you guys later. Bye.